Hey guys, welcome back to the Novity Always Something Garage. Um, so today I guess it's gonna be a little continuation of the powder coat oven video. Um, this video we're gonna be actually powder coating um, our small engine motor stand that we uh, did. That was uh, a, a while ago. <laughs> a lot of videos uh, prior, um, so go check out that video. Um, but we're gonna do some powder coating on it. I think we're gonna do the inside frame red and then the outside frame and then the actual motor bracket black. It's a little two-tone action. So hopefully they come out great and let's get into the video. All right guys, uh, so we're gonna power coat something uh, here. Uh, it's gonna be that uh, small engine stand that I built uh, a while ago. Uh, I'm gonna do a two-tone. Um, we're gonna do like the bottom half in a, in a black and uh, I think we're gonna do the actual cradle itself uh, in a red, Honda colors of course. Uh, it's powder that we had sitting around so I didn't have to buy anything but um, just a few things. Um, we blasted it um, yesterday. A uh, little uh, had a little bit of rust, so we had to clean it back off. But uh, wiped it down with acetone, um, and then um, you know have them hung here with some welding wire. But um, using the Eastwood gun, I do have a, a new uh, style deflector on the front. I picked up off of uh, uh, eBay. Um, just helps, uh, I like it a little better than the, the Eastwood deflector. But uh, this is a dual range gun, so we have a, a high frequency and a low frequency, um, so that uh, you can get into uh, the little nooks and crannies a little better. So I'm gonna shoot this with a, with a black, uh, and then uh, we'll, we'll get it in the oven and uh, bake it off. So the first thing we wanna do is, uh, you got our ground hooked up, I got a ground hook right here, is you press your, uh, this is your, basically your start button, and you'll see, then you know you have a good ground. If it does not sparking, it's not gonna generate the static because powder coating is actually a static. The powder is just blown in the air, and you'll see the powder will actually cling to the part. And um, we can let this part sit, I'd let it sit for two, three, four hours. I I think I've heard guys sit overnight that the powder will stick with the static, but we're going to be a few minutes and uh, let's uh, give it a shot. Uh, you notice I got a dust mask on. This powder is toxic, guys, so uh, be careful breathing that stuff in. Um, most of the time, if you stay far enough away, you won't breathe it, but uh, I just wear the mask just to be safe. safe. So the LED light does wonders and your garage isn't lit, so take it away. It looks like it's coated. So there's a holiday right there, as they call them, painting. So I need to recoat this. Um, all the corners look pretty good, but I'll recoat this back. And I saw one on the other side there, so let's uh, put some more on. So just like that, put some more coat on there and the whole spot's gone. got the, the black parts in there so um, you saw my little window so all I do is I just pull this insulation out and I can shoot it as you can see we're just a little over 400 there and we're a little light there 354 but um, this Eastwood coating is uh, it says 20 minutes after flow out so uh, we, we put the timer on it's flowed out um, a lot of your other powders will have a, a, a time. Usually it's uh, 400 degrees or 450, 425 for a certain amount of time. 
prismatic powders is that way. Um, so when I do prismatic stuff, I go by what they recommend. Uh, most of theirs are 400 for a 25 for a period of time. Uh, Eastwood is really nice. It's really easy for the beginner because they say once you see it flow out, once it turns the gloss, that means the powder now has melted uh, into that coating, looks like paint, is hit your timer, 20 minutes, and 20 minutes you should be done. And I've had good luck with that. I have gotten in a habit, that's Eastwood, I just checked it. So it's 400, it's around three something, it's flowed out. So um, as it sits there, it will bake and um, we'll see how it looks when we pull it out. Tune on a rag. Um, just kind of wipe everything down. Uh, so, so you know, if you're handling with, with, with something with no gloves, you'll get fingerprints over it, and then the powder coat may not stick to that certain spot where the your oils get, are on it. Um, so just take some acetone, wipe everything down, um, just right before you're about to uh, put the the coat on it, and uh, it should be good. So if you have that good ground, uh, the powder should stick right to the whatever you want to get uh, coated. Um, we have our uh, PSI set to it's about like seven um, is the good the good number. Um, as you can see, it's sticking really nice to this. All right, as you can see, we got the red on there, but I take uh, an LED light works out really well, and uh, as you can see. It really shows. If I pull it away, it almost looks like that edge and that corner is coated. But an LED will really show you. Run all the way around it. So we just got to hit those spots right there in the corner. And we'll be done. Don't point directly at it. As you see, I shake it all around. The static from the ground and the positive, it'll suck right into those nooks and crannies. If you point it straight at it, it'll just blow away. So sometimes just pull it away, move it around. These are some of the tricks that I've learned. Now you can see we got that corner really good now. So we're ready to, uh, Put it in the oven. Okay, this is Eastwood powder coating. So um, they recommend their uh, baking time is 20 minutes after what they call flow out. As you can see, it's starting to gloss up. So uh, we'll go 20 minutes and uh, that'll be done. This timer's still going. Um, you guys can uh, keep an eye on the temp of the actual metal. That's when it's in the oven. Uh, just using a little cheap uh, temp gun and you can uh, just keep an eye on it. Uh, but I wanted to talk about cleanup. You saw we did two color colors, red and black. Uh, you could do multiples uh, one after another. I would just recommend clean your equipment, your gun. Uh, I have a spare jug that I use. So if I'm using like, um, you know, now some of the uh, powders come in bags, you'll want to use a funnel and put powder into this, you know, the jug to go in here. Clean your gun after every step, every color, um, and definitely when you're done. So my gun, so when the next time I pull it out, it's clean, it's ready to go. If you allow this powder to sit in and, and build up, you'll get a moisture. I mean, my garage is not air conditioned or, or you know conditioned at all. So uh, temperature change, moisture, whatever you gotta be careful is, it'll cake up in those little nooks and crannies. You don't want it, it may spit out. So as you can see, this gun is fully cleaned. Blow air in and out, take it apart. Uh, clean off your cables, all right? They generate static. This is how powder coat works. It generates a static 
on the part so that the powder sticks to it. Well, that powder will stick to this. So I wipe everything down and then I put it right back into the box. So the next time I'm ready to go, we're ready to hit it. But make sure you clean in between colors. Again, good habit, clean your equipment, clean your area, and you're ready to go next time. So one of the things that we do, um, kind of put this drop cloth down, um, you know, underneath our uh, powder coat stuff, the powder sticks to everything. Um, so just for an easy cleanup, put a drop cloth down. Um, we tape the, the corners down. Um, you know, just so if you like step on the, the, the drop cloth, it doesn't go flying up. Um, so, you know, just do each corner in, then you can contain the extra powder and then it's easy cleanup. All right, guys. So, um, we had talked in that first video when we assembled the powder coat oven and uh, we talked about all the ATV frames and motorcycle frames we uh, powder coated. And you were probably, uh, I mentioned in there, hey, I'll, I'll show you how we get the frames in there safely without disturbing the powder or messing up the, uh, you know, the coating. So what I ended up doing is I had this uh, two by two table. I've had this table for over 25 years. Um, I ended up putting casters on the bottom of it, and then I made this this little contraption. Uh, as you can see, it's a, it's got a lot of coats of powder coat on it, but uh, it's slapped together with things I had laying around the shop. These casters I had laying around, they're just straight casters and some flat bar I bent. So an ATV frame will fit in between these two tabs here, uh, right at the uh, where the foot peg mount is, and. Most all frames I've had in here, they fit. Uh, these tabs right here are basically where the A-arm bolts are. And uh, definitely fits for uh, Honda 450s, uh, 400s, even a Honda 250. Um, so yeah, so basically you put two bolts in and you uh, grab the, uh, I guess the mount, mounting holes for the uh, pegs and you can actually rotate and pivot the frame up so then I can get on the bottom side because if you have a frame sitting down getting underneath of this would be crazy so that's why it's hinged back here I flip it up and then I can get the bottom side actually I do the bottom side first get that out of the way I flip it down and it rests on the two bolts for the a-arm bolts so it's not touching any of the frame and uh, powder coat the rest then I take this and I wheel this right up to the oven. So I made this the height of this. I made it the same as my oven. So then I have a frame on there and then I just transfer it right into the oven. Now you powder coat, do it in reverse step. Put it right back out. Pull it away. Works amazing. Um, done, like I said, probably over uh, 10 frames, I think we have in total, or at least close to it, of ATVs and motorcycles. So pretty cool little contraption. Uh, throw some comments in there. If, if you make one on a bench like I did, it's horrible, but you could do this on the ground also. So if you made your oven on the ground, you could do the same thing. This would just be lower and you could roll it in. Instead of trying, it's, obviously frames are very heavy. You've got to have something very strong to hold a frame and hang it inside the oven. So this way, it's on the floor, it's on the bottom of the oven, and uh, we don't have to worry about that. So as you can see, bread came out pretty good. Um, so there'll be like a wait period of time, you know, the, the uh, metals get hot, of course, in the oven. Um, so you don't want to touch it and put fingerprints in it. Sometimes you can burn your fingerprints into um, the material. Um, so just let it cool down. But once it's uh, nice and cooled off, you can touch it. It's good to go, but it turned out pretty good. Well, we just pulled the outside frame, the black stuff. Came out great. Especially when he powder coated really well, black always looks really good. So we have the semi, I think it's semi gloss. Looks really good. So we have the outside frame and then the motor bracket black, and then we have the inside frame um, red, the one that can uh, rotate and swivel.
here's the final product, guys. Came out great. Um, so like we said earlier, um, the red and the black are all from uh, powders from Eastwood. Uh, they're just the one stage, um, but came out super good. So like we said, outside frame and then the actual motor. Um, little brackets black and then the inside rotating frames red. So it looks, looks really cool. Well, guys, that'll be the end of this video. Hope you guys enjoyed uh, the powder coating. Um, so make sure you guys go check out the first video of us assembling the powder coat oven if you already haven't already done that. Um, super cool build, um, super cheap if you look at it long term. Um, but if you watch this video of how to powder coat, it's, it's very simple. I'm sure you can do a lot of cool things, you know, if you advanced in your powder coating skills. Um, but make sure you guys like the video and also subscribe to the channel for more awesome content. And we'll see you guys in the next one.